We are now going to be looking at section 11O, the alienation, loss or destruction allowance. Now this used to be called a scrapping allowance. It's not really the term used anymore to describe this section. Occasionally you'll still hear or see it or hear someone talk about scrapping allowance. I might even say it as well. But basically um, this doesn't exist. So guys, just in a simple term to show you what this is all about. This is like a negative recoupment. So if X Limited bought Machine X for 1 million rands in year 1. At end of year 2 sold for 350,000 rands. Okay, so when we now sell this asset, we do our usual cost, was a million rands, less our allowances, year one, year two. Year one we claimed 40%, year two we would have claimed 20%. So 400,000, here's my rands column, 200,000, so it's 200,000 to the current year. This gives me a 400,000 rands tax value. My selling price limited to original cost. My selling price is 350,000. My original cost is a million. So which one do I use? The lower of the two, 350,000. So now see. If you now say 350,000 minus 400,000, that is a negative amount, 50,000 rands. Now, if you apply section 110, if you choose to apply it, because you'll see in a second you have to apply it, then that 50,000 rands you can claim as a deduction. So basically what SARS's reasoning here is, and what they say is, they say, okay, we gave you allowances of 40 and 20% because that's what we believe manufacturing assets, how you best account for the useful lives. However, when you sold it for 350, it actually tells us that we gave you too little allowances in the past because we thought that the value should be 400,000, but it's actually 350. So we've paid, given you too little. So here's an extra 50,000. Now, that is what I want you to see there. It gets included. But now important here is you must choose to apply this if you do not do this okay so let's actually continue quickly just here now so very important so that's 50,000 we've now claimed so you, let's say you've chosen it if you then do the capital gain what is the capital gain going to look like the capital gain is going to be your proceeds which is the selling price 350 less the recoupment now guys if you have 50,000 there you don't have a recoupment so no 350,000. What is your base cost? The base cost of an asset after 1 October is the cost of the asset, 1 million, less allowances, right? Now, the allowances in this case were 400,000 and 200,000, sure. Because what have we done with those allowances? We claim it as deduction. See, there was for the current year. Now guys, if you could claim it, you could also claim this 50,000 in this case. So, Section 11 o forms part of your allowances claimed in respect of this asset. Can you see we've claimed it? So, this leaves us with a base cost of 350,000, which means we have no capital loss. Can you see that? Now, make sure that you see now what happens. You must choose to apply this 50,000. So let's say you chose not to apply the 50,000. Then, over here, in this calculation, this section 11O part there will not apply because you didn't claim it. So what would happen is that would go out. We'll change your base cost to 400,000. And now I want you to see what happens. Now we have a capital loss of 50,000. So can you see what happens? If you choose to apply Section 11O, the loss is going to be sitting in your RANDS column. 
If you don't apply it, it's going to be sitting in your capital loss column. Now, which one is the better one for you as a taxpayer? Definitely the RANDS one. Because this 50000 will be set off against other capital gains. So if you don't have any other capital gains, you can't use it. And even if you then can, in the end, you're either going to multiply it by 80 or by 40%, whatever the inclusion rate might be. So what I want you to see, which is important here, is that this decision here makes a difference in where it gets taxed. But now you'll also see that there are some situations where Section 11O cannot apply. So then it will always end up as a capital loss. Right, so guys, let's take a look at Section 11O. So it starts with, so Section 11, remember, Section 11 starts with, if carrying on a trade, you may deduct the following. I'm going to obviously paraphrase but that's what it says so if you're carrying on a trade you may deduct the following look at what they say at the election of the taxpayer can you see that it means they must make the choice an amount by which the cost to that taxpayer of any depreciable asset depreciable asset means an asset qualifying for allowances which qualify for an allowance in terms of make sure that you see now section 11e so it can only qualify with one of these assets. That's the wear and tear section, so movable assets. Section 11B, Section 11D, you don't have to worry about. My apologies, syllabus, Section 12B not. Section 12C, manufacturing machine. Section 12E, small business corporations. Okay, so can you see here? WMT assets, manufacturing machines, small business corporations. I want you to see here, not buildings. You don't get this for buildings. Then, so at the election of the taxpayer, the cost to the taxpayer of any depreciable asset, which qualified for an allowance, and the expected use for life, important here, did not exceed 10 years. So the useful life of the asset cannot be more than 10 years. Now guys, if you look at a section 12C machine, it qualifies for the following write-offs. 14 year 1, 20, 20, 20. So that is considered a 4 year useful life. Even if they tell you in the question, this manufacturing machine has a useful life of 12 years. If you are writing it off over 4 years, that is considered its useful life. So that's what you'll use. So you look at the right of period for tax purposes. So I say, where that exceeds the sum of the amount received or accrued from the alienation, loss, or destruction. So basically what they're saying is they're saying, if you're doing this calculation at the beginning, where we do our recoupment calculation, and you have a negative amount, this section applies. That's what that whole story there is telling you. They tell you, it's only from the alienation, loss, or destruction of that asset. I want you to see that, guys. The, the asset must have been destroyed, or it must have been lost, or stolen, or you must have sold it. If you just decide to stop using the asset, you can't claim this. Right. Those are the most important ones, guys. The rest you can read here. They just tell you about the cost and so on, how to work that. That's not really challenging. Here at the bottom. Provided further. So this is a provider. Provided further that no election may be made in terms of this paragraph by the taxpayer if the amount received or accrued from the alienation loss or the structure of the asset was received or accrued from a person that is a connected person. So, can't use Section 11O if sold to connected person. So, if you're doing it to a connected person, sorry, you can't use a section 11 -hour. all right guys so this is just a summary must be at the election of the taxpayer it must be alienated so that means you can't just stop using it it must have a cost so if it has no cost then there's no quali section 11 o qualification it does not apply to assets of a useful life of longer than 10 years or buildings and you can't get it for a connected person. There is an interpretation note for you that you can work through. Okay, but um, this in essential summarizes everything.